I've got an initialized patch here with the default wavetable loaded in. Let's just turn the filter on to soften it up a bit. And in this video, we're going to look at LFOs. Now, we've seen that these are used as modulation sources. They're basically cyclical waveforms that the target parameter is modulated with. And they're useful for things like vibrato, tremolo, modulating filter cutoff, panning effects, that kind of thing, where you want the values being modulated to go through a repeating pattern over and over again. Now, I'm going to assign LFO1 to pitch so we can really dramatically hear exactly what it's doing. Now, there are a variety of controls here. We'll go through them. First thing I'm going to do is sync this to the tempo of the song. And we can set the rate that it's going to go through this cyclical pattern with this. So let me set it to one, which means whole notes. And I'm going to just decrease the depth a bit. And I'll hold C, and you'll hear how it's going to cycle through the pitch in this type of waveform shape. Let me play with a drum beat, and you'll hear it synced to tempo so that it's starting over again each bar. Now that works great, and we can cycle through different shapes here. So that's a sine wave shape where it's smoothly alternating between those values. Now we can also determine how and when it's going to start this waveform. We have the different sync modes over here, the trigger modes. I'm going to put this on note, meaning that each time I hit a new note, it's going to start the pattern, rather than in free mode, meaning that whenever I hit the note, it's going to start wherever it is in this cycle. I'll give you an example. So it's starting based on wherever it is, but if I put this in note trigger mode, it's going to start anew each time I hit a new note. And we have what's called legato mode, which kind of combines the two. It means that it's going to start, meaning the shape of the LFO is going to be triggered on the note on, but any additional notes you play will just go through the waveform and come in wherever it is in the waveform rather than being re-triggered. Versus being in note mode where each new note restarts it. And finally, we have song position trigger mode, which means it's tied to the position in the DAW. Let me leave it in note mode for now. We'll look at the different shapes. So that's a sine wave. We can click here and hear a triangle wave, and we'll hear it oscillate through the pitch in a more angular way now. Still at the rate of one bar. We have a square wave. where it just toggles between a flat value of one note and then another note. It doesn't transition between them in this example of pitch. I'll do it a bit quicker. Just alternating between those two values. We have a rounded square where it's not quite as abrupt a transition. Saw wave, which is kind of like a ramp down. I'll slow it down a bit here. And then we have the opposite, where it's ramping up. And then we can use an additional shape of sample and hold, and this is nice with pitch at faster rates. And that works really nicely with filter cutoff as well. Let's just try that for a moment. Let's go back to oscillating the coarse pitch, and we finally have a heartbeat shape, which is nice. Let's go a bit slower. And this works nicely with amplitude, I think, depending what type of sound you're after. And you remember in the, one of the earlier videos, I said we can modulate the amplitude to affect the level of the entire layer separate from the master level that we set. And let's bring this down. 
and let's increase the depth. So it's kind of like a little bit of a tremolo, but not a regular cycle in that it's this heartbeat shape and it's a little bit irregular sounding. Let's go back to oscillating the coarse pitch. And we have random, which is, as it describes, random. So the depth controls how deep the modulation is going to be as it goes through that cycle, and the sync syncs it to tempo. And we can also use the delay slider to delay the onset of the LFO beginning. For example, here it is beginning right away. And with this up, we'll hear a delay before the LFO starts. And we can also offset the phase of it, meaning where within this shape it starts. Like right now, it's going to start right at the beginning here, rise up, then down, and then up. But I can have it start by moving that slider, let's say right at the peak. And for example, if I move it over here, it'll start at the low point of the cycle. And here it'll start at the very end at the highest point. Now we can also use what's called unipolar mode. Now right now this little plus sign is not lit, meaning it's in bipolar mode, meaning when I hit the root pitch that it's going to oscillate in both directions above and below it. Let me just mute the modulation for the moment and play you middle C. And now we'll hear it modulate above and below that. But if I put it in unipolar mode, it's going to only modulate in positive values, but at double the range. So again, here it is, the root pitch. And now in unipolar mode. So it's not going below the default value, whereas in bipolar mode, it's going above and below. Now we have up to six separate LFOs. We can use them all as separate modulation sources. And LFO 6 has a unique feature. It's got a polyphonic mode. Let's assign LFO 6 to modulate this pitch. And let's just reduce the depth. I'll sync it to, let's say, every two bars. We can hear in regular mode, as I trigger additional notes after the first one, it's all going to continue through the same LFO cycle. Now, in polyphonic mode, each note re-triggers its own cycle. So that's a little overview of the LFO parameters, and we'll continue with envelopes in the next video.